Wow, this is a big one. I have 100% avoided covering Bigfoot on this channel until now. Why, you might ask? Well, besides aliens and UFOs, Bigfoot or Sasquatch is the most talked about, researched, and debated urban legend in all of North American history, maybe the world. So what could I possibly bring to the table? Well, like Bigfoot, if I'm ever to be taken seriously, I have to come out of hiding on this subject and weigh in. But, no matter what I say or how I present this information here, it will surely be disagreed with and debated. So, is Bigfoot a cryptid urban legend or a real mammal? Or something else? Oh, and by the way, though commonly associated with Bigfoot, the Yeti is an entirely different entity. I think. I go back to my youth when a bunch of us kids went to a matinee movie in my hometown of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. We were all fired up thinking we were cool being able to go to a movie without our parents. We all got a small allowance and quickly bought milk duds and popcorn and anything else that probably amped us up on sugar. The movie that was showing was called The Legend of Boggy Creek. As it rolled, many of the kids continued to laugh and act silly and just have fun. But I began to silently sink into my seat and be consumed by the film in wonder and amazement. The movie centered around the supposed existence of the so-called folk monster, a 10-foot ape creature that attacked livestock and stunk terribly in the Arkansas swamps. True or not, it felt raw and real. <laughs> And it has recently been restored in 4K, by the way. So, my infatuation with cryptids and Bigfoot started when I was young. I love monsters. I was literally obsessed with all the universal monsters and other ones. And at that time, I believed that Bigfoot might just be a living, breathing reality. A real-life monster that one day I might get to see. And more horrifyingly maybe get caught by. So what do I think now, you might ask? I mean, that's what this video is about, right? But before I go there, what I always do is allow myself to hear all the stories and allow all the possible to be possible. But since this subject is such a huge story with hundreds of stories and investigations, I will do this a little bit differently. Let's go through the evidence first. Realize evidence and proof are two different things. If a store was broken into, let's say, and they find hair and fingerprints, that doesn't mean who it belongs to is the person who broke in. But it's evidence. It could be from somebody else that was in the store earlier. But again, it's evidence. You get enough of evidence, and now DNA, and there can be an educated assumption that they have the right person. This isn't far from a way to prove Bigfoot or disprove. See, if you have some evidence and it doesn't hold up, it doesn't mean other evidence is wrong. You keep searching until there is enough evidence that proves the opposite to the point that you are convinced one way or the other. Of course, there's also eyewitnesses, and eyewitnesses are important, but not always reliable. We all process things differently, and as time goes on, memory of certain events erode. But the feeling you had at the time does not. And sometimes your mind can sometimes fill in the blanks. Uh, this is why revisiting old feelings and events is important so you can reprocess them. Sometimes that's a very, very hard process, though. So what does this all mean with Bigfoot? Well, there's one other factor in an urban legend that's this big, and it's called the Galileo effect. The Galileo effect is defined as a belief that persists in a society and thrives almost indefinitely despite the lack of evidence for it or even despite the obvious evidence that disproves it. And if you don't know who Galileo was, some say he was the father of modern science. In the late 16th century, Galileo had a new theory which placed the sun at the center of the universe. Wow. This was seen as threatening to the scientific and especially the religious assumptions of the day and led ultimately to a decree denouncing it as heresy. Despite this, Galileo defended this theory and was placed under house arrest for this very staunch stance he had up until his death in 1642. 
So can we add science to the things that we don't talk about at Thanksgiving dinner now? Why? Ellie, let's not. No, 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 I would be thankful to... Politics, religion, and science. Science seems to threaten the first two, doesn't it? Maybe we shouldn't talk about Bigfoot then either. Who has a problem with it? After all, Bigfoot is almost a religious figure at this point in terms of how divided we all are on it. It exists, it doesn't exist. Anyway, people go to their graves convinced that they saw Bigfoot. People spend their lives searching for and believing in Bigfoot. But that doesn't make Bigfoot any more real or not real. Let's look at the proverbial Bigfoot in the room. And that would be the Patterson-Gimlin film. This film is the most debated footage of a supposed Bigfoot in existence. And if you don't know, the Patterson-Gimlin film is an American short motion picture of an unidentified subject that the filmmakers have said was a Bigfoot. And it's since been subjected to many attempts to authenticate or debunk it. The Bigfoot or Sasquatch in the film was said to be female, and the creature was given the name Patty. Pretty cute. So was it a brilliantly executed hoax, or is it real? Well, Roger Patterson, who filmed it, passed away in 1972. But Bob Gimlin, who was with him at the time, is still alive and a few years ago began doing interviews after years of silence. Bob still affirms the film as being authentic. Conversely, Philip Morris, not the cigarette guy, but the owner of the Morris Costume Company, contends that Mr. Patterson purchased that costume used in the film from him around August 1967 and that it is 100% fake. Well, Philip passed away, but his son Scott owns a business today. But the more important question is, who was lying, Mr. Patterson or Mr. Morris? Both wanted to be famous for the same thing, just in different ways. I really think the entire case of the Patterson-Gimlin film lies on that very question. Forget all the fancy analysis and hours of long specials on the film. The copy of the film that you see lacks the data because it's so degraded to know 100% if it's real or fake, no matter how many supposed professionals get a hold of it. So again, I ask you, who was lying? One of the two men were, and I don't like liars, do you? But there is always the same question that is also part of the same questions about aliens. And that question is why with all the great consumer cameras and cell phone cameras in the world, why don't we have a better picture of Bigfoot? Well, there may be an answer to that. Go with me here. There are several animals that were thought to be extinct and were later discovered to actually be alive. Two of which, for example, is the New Guinea big-eared bat and the Kashmir musk deer, among many others. The New Guinea big-eared bat was believed to be extinct back in 1890. Yet after 120 years, the long-eared bat was rediscovered by scientists who had accidentally caught it in a bat trap. The Kashmir musk deer is native to Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, western Nepal, and they were thought to be extinct from 1948 until there was a sighting that was recorded in 2009. So enter Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus is an extinct ape from the early to middle Pleistocene era of southern China, represented by one species in particular called Gigantopithecus blacki. Potential identifications have also been made in Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, and fossils indicate it stood as high as 10 feet tall and weighed up to 1,000 pounds. Gigantopithecus, a fruit eater, may have failed to adapt to the grass roots and leaves that became the dominant food sources as time went on and maybe why he died out. However, evidence of Gigantopithecus has never been found in North America. All that is available is part of a jawbone and various teeth from about 10,000 years ago in Asia. However, we can't find any from even 10 years ago here in North America. So either there are none or Bigfoot isn't a Gigantopithecus, but not so fast. Because we asked the question, if Gigantopithecus remains or Bigfoot remains, how did they get from Asia to the Americas? Somewhere around 20,000 years ago, sea levels were low due to lower global temperatures. As the water receded, it exposed a landmass between Asia and North America. 
For a few thousand years, vegetation and wildlife gradually filled the space, making it habitable enough for primates to cross. Could it be that Bigfoot is a living relic or a living fossil that evolved from the mysterious Gigantopithecus and crossed from Asia to North America? Well, it's a stretch, but it's possible, in theory anyway. But there are other problems, however. For one, why are there no artifacts of this creature in the modern era here in North America? Well, Bigfoot hunters disagree, and they say there's a plethora of footprints from virtually all over. And without going into all the possible real versus fake footprints, one can assume that if there is such a creature, and it has been sighted, filmed, and photographed, that there would have to be some authentic footprints. And maybe there is. These so-called authentic footprints have been combed through by all kinds of professionals, from forensic pathologists, anthropologists, paleontologists. Still, there are fakes, and still, there are some thought to be real. And what about bones? According to Mark Wilson, a geology and natural sciences professor at the College of Worcester, there has never been any real biological evidence, like bodies, bones, skin, hairs, or DNA, found, he said. To have an animal be real in the world of science, we have to have some part of that animal, he said. And there's nothing, nothing at all. However, I'll go back to the animals that have been thought to be extinct and then rediscovered. If you get into the nuances of all this conjecture, it may be more of a belief and eyewitness thing than anything really tangible. If you find a dinosaur from 60 million years ago, it's able to be verified as authentic. Yet we don't have much more than 10,000 year old bones and a pile of teeth from Gigantopithecus in Asia. Do Bigfoot creatures maybe bury or somehow destroy their dead as according to some Sasquatch researchers? Well, maybe, but why? Why would they be so clever as to know that humankind will hunt down their bones? There are other pieces of evidence. For example, we do have Bigfoot sounds, and there have been many recordings of what is to be believed as Bigfoot calls, whoops, and screams. Shut up. Some Bigfoot hunters actually have said that they actually have interacted verbally with a Sasquatch. And then there's a whole new phenomenon, sort of new. Some Bigfoot researchers claim that Bigfoot creatures build nests and shoulders by twisting tree branches together. This evidence was discovered in Russia by Bigfoot researcher and biologist John Bigdernagel a few years ago, and American Bigfoot researchers have found similar instances of this phenomenon here in North America. All of these things can create a virtual cornucopia of evidence to support the existence of Bigfoot creatures. It can also damn those claims if one by one they're proven to be something else or an all-out fraud. And so it goes on and on. And here lies the rub. Every time a Bigfoot researcher comes up with a bogus claim, it not only sends everyone down the wrong lane, but corrodes the overall truth. It murks the water. You have heard me talk about this on this channel and how I despise fakery. There are so many compelling urban legends, mythical beasts, extraterrestrial entities, paranormal forces, all these things that have not yet been proven or disproven 100%, and it's why I do this channel. It's why I spend so much time on these subjects. Urban legends contain the core of truth somewhere, somewhere in their stories. As for Bigfoot, what if they are real? What would our society do with them or it? What would we do to it or them? Would it change the fabric of our science? There are hundreds of thousands of acres of forest land in this country and across the world. And much of it, human beings have never set foot on. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'll keep looking, listening, and waiting to really know the truth about the legend of Bigfoot. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a big favor and subscribe to this channel. It helps me so much. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and click that bell so that you're informed when I upload new videos. Stay safe, you guys. Take care of each other and keep rock alive.